there is this what is it called adult Wednesday Adams I don't know if I've mentioned that to you guys when I'm feeling down and I want to watch something that's kind of some dark humor it's called adult Wednesday Adams um, one of my fans one of you guys showed her to me it's this like actor writer director girl who's like so cool she's actually now one of the writers of that show on Netflix called the Santa Clarita diet um, but she was writing basically um, skits about what adult Wednesday Adams would be like um, if she was an adult. And it was hilarious. There was some sort of like copyright infringement, so she couldn't continue to make it. But oh my god, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it before or not, but it is hilarious. There's only like 6 or 12 episodes. It's freaking so funny. Go watch it. Adult Wednesday Adams. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. And I finally... I was gonna post this next week and I was like, you know what? People are gonna wanna hear this. There's a guy named Rob who has excellent credibility and I'm going to put his link somewhere, either up here or here. Um, he's actually out of California. He does some paranormal research. I think he's more into, he said, like still doing engineering um, and like the data collection part versus actually investigating. Um, but anyway, he has huge credibility. He was featured on Ghost Adventures and um, he reached out to me after I did the Wonder Box um, episode, which was regarding Steve Huff and how I kind of called out the Wonder Box as being a fraudulent piece of ghost hunting equipment. Just to refresh your memory lightly, I don't want to go deep into a conversation. Um, it's basically, he's wanting, I think, like 1700 to 2000 I think there's even one for like 2200 um, the Wonder Box has been featured on uh, Paranormal Lockdown with Katrina um, from Paranormal State and Nick Groff from Ghost Adventures. And I believe the show now has moved to TLC. It was originally on Destination America. Anyway, they're using this thing called the Wonder Box and basically um, it's considered kind of an amplifier of... Uh, the PSV7 and um, or ghost hunting apps, which I was already upset about because I don't like people promoting ghost hunting apps anyways, unless you've done like legitimate, you know, um, exercises behind investigations of proving the apps work, which you guys know I'm working on those, which there will be another one of those coming up soon. Um, I don't think anyone should be promoting something to be connected with apps because most of them I've used are not legitimate pieces of equipment. In the meantime, um, I basically got a lot of responses from people that um, knew about the Wonder Box. I wanted to get in touch with somebody that had actually seen or held or taken apart the Wonder Box to see is this thing worth two grand because that's a lot of money. Once again, to refresh your memory, in, I have an SLS camera, which is, Bill Chappell has invented this. It's the amazing equipment from the Xbox One. It detects basically invisible energies if it's standing in front of the camera. The SLS camera, I think is, is it 1200 or 1500? So I'm like, damn, what's this wonder box about? Is it really worth, you know, two grand over something like the SLS cam because that thing is made by an actual engineer. We all praise Bill Chappell because he is a legitimate and he and him and Gary Gaka have done so much amazing things, you know, in the paranormal community. So, 
I had some serious concerns about this Wonder Box. So I got in touch with this guy named Rob. Rob was awesome immediately. Like he was not um, wanting to shamelessly hide anything regarding what he knows about the Wonder Box. He's done a lot of research and um, he actually bought something called, oh shoot, I can't remember. Did he call it like a Geopod or something like that? Apparently there's been several inventions pre Wonder Box. I didn't know about that. I haven't done research on them. I'm not interested in them to be honest. Um, I like to buy things from credible engineers like Gary Gaka and you know he builds things in the name of his daughter Melanie who passed away and then you have Bill Chapel who is just unbelievable when it comes to technology and inventions. So I, I talked to Rob and I said well you know he says he's had the Geopod or whatever. He actually took that apart. Um, he said it was worth pennies on the dollar. Basically you'll, you guys will see the footage of me talking to him. He sold it for a lot of money. Apparently people, th these are in high demand. Like he bought it for like four or 500 and then he was gonna sell it for 600 just to try to get rid of it. And then someone offered him 1200 and he said he went ahead and sold it because it was easy money. But one of his friends apparently bought the Wonder Box. So he was able to actually look at it and see what it's made up of. And um, unfortunately, it sounds like it's definitely not worth the $2,000. It actually sounds like it's something um, that you can actually build at home. I've had like 400 people <laughs> message me and, you know, put comments on the YouTube channel that you can build the Wonder Box yourself for a few hundred dollars if you're really wanting one that bad. I still don't really get what it does. Apparently, it like helps take out the white noise of like the PSB7. Um, and it also amplifies apps, so um, I guess the fancy coiling, like the copper and like the crystals are just for like a fancy exterior. None of that stuff really does anything. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys watch this interview and then once it's done, I'll touch back with you after that. What's up? I'm Crystal. I'm so glad I got to meet you, everybody. This is Rob, um, and today he's going to chat with us about the Wonder Box, Mr. Steve Huff, whatever you know about that. And um, so how do you know about the Wonder Box? What is your experience with the Wonder Box? Well, it's not only been the Wonder Box, it's been everything that he's done. I mean, um, I think before in the past, Starting, you know, from his beginning, I was watching him, and he was pretty interesting. Um, and I don't know what what happened or where it turned, uh, but it just went to some really weird stuff where he was just bashing everybody. One minute he was praising everybody, the very next week it would be like a stab in the back, and he's like, you know, just talking crap about people. And he would say one minute, oh my God, this thing is the best thing since sliced bread. The next minute he's slandering it. And it's like, oh my God, this is like crazy. Mm -hmm. So as, you know, because there was a lot of us that were following him. I mean, a lot of the big people in the ITC field were following him. And say, you know, this guy is doing actually some pretty good stuff. And then all of a sudden it's like he started, I don't know, wanting to make money, possibly. Like, you know, some people do. They think they're, they're going to make money in the paranormal field. And as you know, you know, and I know that that's not what we're in it for. Legitimate people, I guess, aren't in for that. Yes. Right. So, you know, so then he started creating, he created the, the um, what was it? Oh, the portal. So I'm like, okay. So he created this box, right? So then he one up it. He went to like a mini portal. Then from there, he went to the Wonder Box. So, and I'm just seeing how much money he's charging for these boxes, and I'm like, okay, whatever. People are silly for ordering these boxes. Now, wait a second. So you're saying there was actually inventions before the Wonder Box? Because I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, there was a deal. I mean, the uh, there was a box that he called the Portal. It was basically a, a amplifier with a couple of pedals slapped on the sides, and then he started adding, 
you know, twisted copper and crystals, whatever to it, mm -hmm. and saying, oh yeah, well, look, this is the best thing since sliced bread. And then he started slamming other stuff that people were, you know, helping him promote. And he was promoting boxes. And he was like, oh yeah, that's crap. You got to use my box. So then, then it regressed. They went to the mini portal. And then from there, it went to the next thing you know, oh, look, here's an, the best thing that I ever created. Here's a portal. It's the best invention ever. Um, so, you know, I knew that you were looking at one, and, and I was just like shaking my head, two grand for this box. Right. right. So, unfortunately, I knew somebody that purchased one. And. And I was just in shock because this is, she does some great work. And I was like, wow, he actually got her, you know, convinced to actually buy one. Somebody got duped for it. Yeah. Yeah. So then I got, actually, I said, Hey, do me a favor. You know, let me just check out some pictures. I really want to check it out, you know, this and that. And then, so I started seeing, you know, what was used and all the pedals that were used. And so, I mean, yeah, it's an expensive box. I mean, if you add up the parts, I think I sent you a list, a link to all the, the parts that were used. There's a pedal, two pedals and a amplifier. Okay, so I'm just, uh, I'm doing some audio voiceover work for you guys because I'm listening to my interview that I did with Rob. So basically he's saying that um, when he looked at this Wonder Box, there it consists of literally two guitar pedals and an amp and that's it and obviously ways that you hook it up together but that can't be much because as most of us know cords and wiring isn't very expensive so i'm not even going to add those to this so i'm on guitar center's website right now so i'm going to look at the top selling uh, reverb pedals so the cheapest one I guess that would be the most the highest seller would be about $59 and the most expensive looks like it's probably around $150 okay two of the components involved are guitar pedals we're gonna need some sort of an amp to go with it to hook up to it so it looks like if you're looking at top seller amps at Guitar Center the cheapest because obviously what the Wonder Box is is small right so the smallest is about $34 and they can go up to about $250 at the most to be fair. So let's total this up, two pedals plus an amp. What does that equal? So now when you say pedals, is that like guitar pedals? Effect pedals, yes. Okay. One, it's called uh, a noise gate. So that's going to kind of kill any static or any type of feedback that's coming into the box. Right? Okay. Then he has another effect pedal that um, is used for, um, for vocals. Okay. So you can adjust the vocals, the pitch, the tone, things like that. And then there's reaper. And that's all it is. But yet, he's just spray painting it, slapping Velcro or whatever he is right. to attach that, and then uh, an external power supply, and he's charging two grand. So my question to you is, you know, there's been a lot of allegations. I actually, I'm going to be truthful right now, and I'm going to tell you that I have not watched any of his videos. Okay. Um, and that's just because I, I, I'm only working in the production professional side of stuff. And I think I've said before, he is really nobody. I, and that's not to be offensive to him. Uh, he just is a nobody in the professional industry. And so yeah. it's because of that, I, I have no interest in researching him unless he becomes something. Obviously, you know, with Nick Groff and Katrina now, he has been slightly pushed, you know, in a certain way. But it, what is the allegations behind... I've heard this more than once from more than one group of paranormal, you know, people that have looked at this. There's supposedly a tape player inside that they say crosses verbiage or words. Sometimes it plays backwards or at different times. I'm not really sure. Can you respond to that? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Yeah, so basically what he's using are, are certain apps. There's no recorders inside. Okay. Um, what he's actually doing... <laughs> 
is taking um, different apps and playing them back. All right, so he gets certain words through, and what he does is he actually manipulates the audio uh, during the editing process. And what you do is, or what he's doing, and, and I've called it out. I mean, because I played the, uh, uh, I made a YouTube video with exactly what he was doing. I reproduced it to a T. Okay. And uh, unbeknownst to me, it was used in a couple of uh, videos that were exposing them. And I was like, oh my God, my video's there. And they're giving me props for doing it. Wow. And it's not me trying to expose anybody. I'm just trying to be real and show people, you know, what the paranormal is about. Right. So the reason why I'm keeping, you know, I think tabs on and see what he's doing is because I care. I mean, it, it needs, you know, damaging the field, the ITC field, I mean, um, specifically. Well, when you're an investigator, at least my opinion, you know, I am pushing the science side of this industry because I truly believe that this could become a science, an actual science. But when you, and, and that's hard enough as it is trying to convince scientists to get involved with physics or ITC or engineers. But then you get someone like this that comes out of nowhere that says he has this unbelievable portal thing, whatever. It's obviously, it, it appears very fraudulent to me. And then it makes the whole thing look like a joke. And that's the concern that I have for it. And I'm like you, I'm trying to protect, I have a lot of newbie investigators that follow me. I don't want them to go out and blow two grand on something they think is this brand new, unbelievable piece of equipment from an engineer, quote, engineer, <laughs> right. that can make this great thing and, and then they get it and it's a fraudulent piece of equipment because that's what it appears like to me. It, it appears to be very fraudulent and I have concerns about it and not a lot of people have had their hands on one like you because... No one wants to blow the two grand, which I don't blame them. Yeah. I could do it with my production, you know, company, but I don't want to do it. I, I do not want to feed money into him or it at all. So that's yeah. why I haven't done it. Right. I mean, I've done the same thing with the geo box. Right. I mean, I own the geo box number four. Okay. And people were like, well, you got it, you know, before it was even finished. But I saw, you know, somebody else that had the original geo box that bought it, and I saw the insides, and I said, "Wait a minute, no!" So I pulled the one that I had. I ripped it apart. Really? Wow. And and this is the geo box made by him, right, Steve Hub? No, this is a, No, it's made by George Graham. Okay. So George and, and Steve kind of collaborated at one point, and were designing something. Um. And then he made, uh, George Brown made the Steve Huff edition or something like that. I don't remember. It was something crazy. Uh -huh. But um, so I ripped it apart and I saw how it was made. And I wow. said, oh, my God, this guy's charging. You know, I paid 600 for it. And I was able to turn around and somebody offered me 1200 And I said, no, I'll sell it to you less. And they were like, no, 1200 cash. And I was like, okay. So, yeah, wow. I was stupid and were not if I didn't do it. Right. So... But, you know, and I saw how it was made, and I said, even with that, it was the box, yes. The design was really cool. I mean, that alone, I think, was worth maybe a couple of hundred dollars, but the internals were all Chinese-made, and they were poorly put together. Mm -hmm. The soldering joints and everything was, like, bad. Wow. And then I heard, after I owned it and I sold it, right after I got rid of it, the first one caught on fire. I mean, that's how poor it was. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, I mean, that's really not funny, though, because you could take that into a historical location, and most paranormal groups don't have liability insurance. Seriously, what if it catches on fire, it burns down a historical site, you're in jail forever, right? I mean, for arson. No, exactly. Exactly. So, wow. it's just, and that's what I think was my big concern, was, you know, people... Um, are getting into things and buy things because, you know, somebody's promoting them and they think, oh, wow, this is so well made. It's so well designed. Look at what it can do when it's like, you know, a, a snake oil salesman trying to push something that doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And then they edit the video. And if you ever watch the video, a lot of the, the, the words that he, he annotates in the videos, they don't even match to what you're actually hearing. Mm. 
So, and it's just like... I so, no, how, what's your opinion? I don't know if you've seen it, but what's your opinion then with, um, you know, the series with Katrina and Nick? Have you watched them use the, the Wonder Box? What, do you have an opinion on it? Honestly, my honest opinion is, you know, and, and this is what I tell everybody, it's for TV. So, you know, and I've been around some of the production crews and, and talked to some of the people, and I've actually been on a couple of shows. So, you know, and some of the things, you know, after the fact, after the filming, um, you know, some people have pointed out that was all fake evidence. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they saw it. They were there. I mean, there was even one part where at a location here in California, one of the scripts was left behind. And, you know, the docent that I know really well at this location, she showed me a copy of it. Mm -hmm. and, and she said, you can keep it. And I was like, I don't want it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just, but then again, I mean, a lot of people that don't know anything, they see these shows and that's what they, that's what they go on. So it know, makes they, me so they, sad. I mean, because I have worked with Zach and I do know he's legitimate and he, he does want to capture the raw real side of it. He does try to back it up with scientific evidence. He does use Bill Chapel, who I know and met, and he is amazing. You know, Bill's actually a very big skeptic. I don't know if he's really presented himself that way, but because he's an engineer in the science side, that makes him very skeptical, and I think that makes it even more credible. That's why he's building equipment, because he's like, well, if you say this exists, we need to prove it through these, you know, items and purchases and how we're detecting and collecting data. And that yeah. makes it more legitimate. But I know that, you know, 90% of the shows are definitely fraudulent. And it makes me sad that Nick was on such an amazing series with Zach. And he's basically thrown his reputation away. Is really, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And I, I, when I first saw the first episode, I'm like, what is this Wonder Box thing? Like, and, and even Nick made it sound like, oh, it's this huge thing on YouTube and everybody knows what it is in the paranormal. And I'm sitting here like, I have no idea what you're talking about, you know, but I slowly started, you know, looking into it over time. And because honestly, I didn't really have an interest. I had a feeling watching it on the show that it just wasn't, it was not legitimate. I just had that feeling. I get that they were there, you know, this the pedals pull out the sound and the white noise to get a clearer, crisper, uh, you know, EVP or DVP, whatever. But I'm like, mm, I mean, I've had some really like really good responses, but some of the stuff they get is like right on cue. I'm like, I just don't buy it. When you've had that many investigations under your belt. You just know when something's legitimate or not, you know? No, exactly. So. That's exactly right. Um, and I think, you know, when I first saw Nick's show also, you know, I mean, I knew everything that happened, you know, between why he left or why Zach let him go. And, and then with Katrina, you know, with her, I mean, she, I've actually talked to her because she was actually one of the, um, screeners for Zach for a while mm -hmm. for Ghost Adventures and you know and I talked to her a couple of times and then when you know when you know with her past being with you know Brian and, and everything with how that whole show kind of went got caught and went exactly so there was a lot of background with that and I was like you know it's kind of funny how these two are now coming together to work together and I just thought it was kind of very interesting there's like there, it's a like Katrina and it's it's nothing personal obviously I have nothing against Katrina or Nick exactly. but exactly. it's almost like they're kind of the outcasts of the paranormal industry and they've become together as one kind of but it is you know when you ruin your reputation your credibility goes down the toilet and because this isn't what we're trying to do is a science industry and that's not what you want to do is ruin your credibility no, so exactly. So, you know, with, with everything that I have experienced with the Wonder Box, with the Geo Box, with everything else, I mean, I've built my own boxes. Okay. Kind of built on the same principles, but a little bit different. 
I actually, you know, and Bill is, to me, Bill is incredible, mm -hmm. like you were saying, Bill Chappell. I mean, he's an incredible inventor. He's a skeptic. I'm also, this is what, you know, uh, people that do know me, I'm a big skeptic also. Mm -hmm. So for me to say something is, you know, look, this evidence that we got is something that I can explain and I would consider it paranormal. It's huge. Mm -hmm. So I go into every investigation as a skeptic, mm -hmm. no matter if it's a well-known location, because so many people have gone in there. How do you know it's really haunted? Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's just telling stories. Is it all folklore? You don't know. Mm -hmm. And the locations just making money. Yes, it's awesome that we're helping support, you know, the locations. I mean, I've put, I've held fundraisers for locations. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just how I am. So, yeah, everything that I look at, I'm very scientific. There's got to be a scientific explanation. Um, and I love the segment that you did um, here recently with you talking about, um, you know, using meters, um, talking about EMF. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that. And I was like, oh, my God, finally, somebody else is actually sitting there doing their homework. Because, how, Crystal, how many people do their homework? None. Sit, sit, <laughs> uh, you know, the, how many times have we heard the definition on TV of, well, okay, this is an electromagnetic field. This is what said ghosts are made up of, is, and this is how it detects it. And you're kind of like, well, what the F does that mean? <laughs> I know, you know what I mean? Like... And but yet on another term, you have to be careful explaining that to people because not everyone understands physics, not everybody understands the science side. So I tried to break it down to the most basic terms I could, because I do. I feel like as investigators, you have to know what you do, what you're talking about. Like it's not just holding up a meter and making it beep. I hate when. Yeah, but this is really you know my channel mostly is for people that are of the professional side of it. Or people that are really trying to take it serious, and I, I most people I know that investigate, they're not going to use one of those little tiny meters, anyways, you know. So, but but it is people need to understand the difference between a tri-filled meter, a mel meter, and the different accesses, and, and not everybody understands that, and so I. I wanted to put it out there in terms of, no, this is science. We are detecting something with the balls of energy that we're capturing on, you know, video and film, but it's been undetected by science, you know, so it, it's just a, it's an ongoing field. It keeps, you know, it's like a, a revolving door. It never stops. It's going to keep growing. We're going to keep learning. In your opinion, then, the Wonder Box is basically made up of like three to five parts plus some copper wire, um, aluminum box. That doesn't do anything. That doesn't do anything. So do you, so you just don't find it legitimate at all, basically? I don't find it legitimate at all. Okay, and you think that $2,000 is just a total ripoff of money? I think it is. And In you, my honest opinion, would I spend that much money? No. I mean, I'm not planning on it. I mean, and that's usually what I do. If I Like, I bought the SLS camera because not everyone has one. I wanted to tear it apart and show everybody what it does. Amazing piece of equipment. Amazing. Would I throw the two grand down for this box? No way. It's the weirdest looking thing, and I don't even understand what the portal light thing does on top. It doesn't do anything. It's, it's pretty, pretty purple, purple light is what it is. <laughs> It's Christmas lights. It's it's a very pretty Christmas purple light, and if you want to stand in it so that you are illuminating, please do. <laughs> you know, so and I don't. Don't forget your bedazzle kit to uh, add all your jewels to it. You know what? If I bought one, I would at least request rhinestones on the side because <laughs> I need it to match my outfit and my headband. <laughs> no. My God, but that might be another five grand extra, so I've got to be careful with that. So now, as a ghost hunter, let's let's say that there's people out there right now watching that are like, I absolutely want a wonder box. I hands down, I can't afford it. How do I build it? What do I need to get to build it? I can either show them how to build it, or if they're not good with building something. I can build something that is actually legit and actually uses, you know, some things that Bill has designed in some of our boxes. You know, I could build something for him that would work 
and it is legit. I mean, I've had some of my boxes on, I don't have anything going, and I'm hearing voices coming out. And I'm like, what the hell is that? So now I do have one more question, though. So if you're saying that there's the pedals that are included with this Wonder Box and these other pieces that you've said, you have to use a Ghost app in order to make these work. Yes, either a Ghost app or just a SPS, uh, an SP7 or, you know, any type of hack shack, anything like that. See, to... and that's another problem I have with it, to be honest, because, you know, I'm in the process of editing and going through apps, which, you know, you saw the first video I've done. I'm not finished, but yeah. I'm telling you right now, nine out of 10 apps are not legitimate. No, they're not. So um, I don't know why someone would be promoting apps with a piece of equipment when they haven't even done their own homework with the apps. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So do you, do you agree that that makes sense? I totally agree. Okay. I can't even believe this guy's making Hey, you know what? He's a good salesman. I, and I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say that he's not because yeah. Yeah. actually he is. He's a, a brilliant salesman. Obviously. What do you think about him going on? He was actually on Paranormal Lockdown not too long ago and Nick was of course talking him up as this inventor and uh, engineer oh. which I would not call him an engineer but okay whatever floats your boat I'll take it up you know one notch further um, yes I saw the episode because I want I knew he was gonna be on there I wanted to see what was because no I wanted to see what him and George were, were up to right uh, so I did and, but see, this is me being a skeptic, and this is me wanting to, I do my homework on everything I do. I'm like you. I mean, you're going to sit there and spend hours and hours on physics, how EMF works, you know, things like that. And I do. I spend probably 90% of my, my time doing paranormal stuff is all research. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's tearing apart a box, whether it's tearing apart an app whether, you know, doing anything like that or even, you know, doing physics. And, you know, and I, I'm not out there to destroy Steve Huff. I, seriously, I'm not out there to destroy the Wonder Box. I am out there just to seriously analyze on a scientific level equipment and if it's legitimate or not and apps are just the same. And I've had a problem with this for a while. I mean, and it's caught obviously a lot of attention now because at first it was on Destination America or is it on TLC? They're on TLC. Yeah. And what's the ghost show doing on TLC? It's That's very nice. strange. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that I think has to do with Amy Brunei. Also, their show went on there for Kindred Spirits. But that is strange because Kindred Spirits is exactly what that says, which is friendly family spirits so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming that Katrina had a friendship going on with Amy and kind of was able to slide them into that network so but you know I just want to make sure that I'm watching out for other people because I don't like fraudulent stuff in this industry I mean mm -hmm. one of the hardest things I've ever done was quit the show that I was supposed to be on and it was because they asked me to be fraudulent and be scripted and I refused it and I feel like my goal since then has been to just be myself and be authentic, not just to myself, but to this field. And so when I see things, I'm just like, this is a red flag, you know? And when I, when I first saw your channel, that's what attracted me. I was like, wow, she is like legit. She is like speaking. It's like me looking into the mirror. I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it was like, wow. And I just subscribed to your channel and everything that you do put out. I wish I could watch it live. Um, sometimes I start watching it. I'm not as live as I should be. Everybody's wanting me to go live more often. And I'm like, right. it's hard to do that, you know? So, yeah. but so anyway, what I was going to say before, like when we were talking about Nick and, and being on that show, it was funny because shortly after that episode aired, I think two weeks after, he had one of his tours um, on the Queen Mary. Hmm. So I knew a couple of people there, and I saw some of the YouTube videos, uh, or no, they were on Facebook Live, and he was actually promoting one of the one of the geo boxes that he uses on the show, 
and he's walking around with it saying, look, listen to this, listen to this. And I'm like, dude, this, there's just a radio inside of there just playing. So you're picking up L.A. frequency, and you're in L.A. Yeah. So you're just up, I know that. Trust me. Right? I mean, I used to live there, so I know. Exactly. And that's why I said that. So and I'm like, dude, you're going to pick up a lot of chatter. So yeah. and he's walking around, listen, listen, to speaking. And I'm like, oh, my God. I know. That's people. It's just, it's crazy. And you get the gullible people out there that, like, who have, I mean, obviously, Steve Huff's not doing bad for himself financially. There's obviously people out there that are buying it. So, you know, which is none of my business. Everyone's entitled to whatever they want to do. But I just, I'm, I'm not in this for the money. Obviously, I'm not in this for just to be famous. I'm in this because I take the, the industry very serious because I'm passionate about it. I love it. You know, it's my, I always tell people, this is my adrenaline rush. I don't, I don't do motocross or, you know, hiking or, you know, what is it called? Rock climbing without, you know, this is my adrenaline. So yeah. I take it very serious, you know. I see you protecting it and telling people like, like you see it. And that's, that's why I do what I do. And I speak my mind about certain things. And, you know, one time Steve came after me for saying something, saying that I was slandering him. And I said, I never slandered. I'm giving my opinion. This mm -hmm. is my honest opinion. This is the things that I have exposed. Mm -hmm. And he had nothing to say. He just dropped it. Yeah, I actually, um, it's interesting you say that. I, I got in contact. Oh, wait, let me make sure I get this right before I, I say it. It is one of Johnny Cash's family members. Um, she found my video about Steve Huff mm. and apparently Steve, once again, I haven't watched any of these, but apparently he's allegedly made contact with Robin Williams and Johnny Cash and several other celebrities that have crossed over. And this, this family member of Robin Williams, uh, or I'm sorry, of Johnny Cash, mm -hmm. ha they have all requested him to remove this video because Basically, they said you've never, you know, you didn't have permission. I apparently he gets a little bit um, in in too personal. I guess is a way to to say it. And I guess the family said, you know, they just don't find it appropriate. It's one thing that like Zach and the crew went to the mansion down in Jamaica because mm -hmm. they had approval. This yeah. is not. You shouldn't be trying to get famous off of someone else's fame, basically. Um, and she was going to talk with me, but she was hesitant because it sounds like she was also attacked by Steve Huff for asking him to remove the video footage of him communicating with Johnny Cash. And apparently also I heard from her, Robin Williams' family has also been in touch with Steve Huff requesting that footage to be taken down. And he also slandered the family of Robin Williams, apparently. So yeah. this guy, he's just not a very decent human being, it sounds like, to deal with. No. And and I remember the, the whole, because I kind of saw it, um, some of the, the, the feedback going back and forth between um, Johnny Cash's uh, family. Um, I think it was his sister or her, I don't remember. Somebody in this family said, no, please take this off. And he ignored that. And he posted it anyway. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with Michael Jackson. He did that also. He did a Michael Jackson. Oh, man. This yeah. guy does yeah. not stop, then, it sounds like. Yeah, exactly. And I was, and, and I called him. I mean, there was a few of us that said, oh, I bet that he's going to do this person. And he did. Well, and I actually, I know from the, you know, the family member of Johnny Cash, she doesn't want to be identified of, of, of her relative, you know, what she is, which is fine. Right. Um, which I understand, you know, I think that they still are in mourning of, of, and they're still dealing with a huge estate, obviously. This person has royalties that will never end, all of them, Michael Jackson and Robin Williams for that matter, but um, apparently the, the family of Robin Williams believes that the footage Steve Huff has put out on the channel of him communicating is actually pre-recorded footage from some sort of a comedy event that Robin Williams did. And yeah. I guess they called him out on it as family of Robin Williams and Steve Huff apparently got very angry and 
um, irate and basically was not very pretty to deal with, which is really sad. You know, you I understand that we as investigators, we're trying to interact with the other side. They could be famous. They may not for that matter. But it is really freaking sad when it's the there these people that are dead are disrespected. And I feel like that's the, the area we're going to is there's a, a zone that he has crossed that's just turned into a disrespectful zone. Especially when family has come forward and said, understand that we are still dealing with royalties and mourning and and it's not we didn't say it was okay. You didn't have our approval for this, so please respect us. And don't get famous by our family member using their name. And and he just doesn't care. And it's that's really sickening to me too. There's I just feel like in this industry, as we're dealing with the other side, there should be a big respect for the dead. And I feel yeah. like he has crossed that line a lot. Yeah. Well, here recently <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I'll I'll send you the clip. So basically he has said over the seven years that he's been doing this, he has gone farther than anybody in the history of ITC world of work. And I mean, I have that statement. Well, and I, and I reply back to him. And yeah. you know, and you know what though, Bill Chapel would never say something like that because he's so refined with himself. And he's the type that he doesn't really want acknowledgement, but you know, because obviously we know who has gone the furthest. It is Bill, but he's wanting to do this once again for the passion, for the love of it, for the determination of finding evidence. It's not about who went the furthest or who did the best or who did the most. So I mean, that usually says a lot about someone's character if they're going to have a statement like that. Especially, right, especially a skeptic going above and beyond trying to develop things or develop tools and, and to to try to capture evidence. You that, mean Bill Chapel, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. yes, exactly. Um, you know, I think that we all do that. We want to go above and beyond and do our diligent research and try to prove, you know, and maybe, trust me, I mean, I've seen so many apparitions and that's what got me into this field. I saw my first apparition when I was four. Yeah. So it's not sometimes it's not always about the evidence and the and the proving it. Sometimes it is just those private experiences that you get, and it maybe that's just a way for us as investigators to keep pushing. It's like little reminders that you should keep going with this. You know, you you are obviously attracting you know them to you. Keep proving it for the community. So I do. I believe that. I, I think that's probably what it was in your case, especially. Yeah. And it's a good feeling that when you're doing it for the right reasons, yeah. like you are, and you're putting it out there, whatever your research is, or even like you said, you're doing engineering and inventing, and you're putting the good out there for people, that's a good karmatic debt coming back to you. You know, I guess my final thought for it is poor Nick Groff. And I mean, obviously I've met him and he's a good person. And I don't think that he had intentions to go down this path. But I think he also knows that this is his life now as an investigator. And I think that when Zach fired him or maybe the Travel Channel, whoever it was, he really didn't have a choice but to keep going with this direction of ghost hunting. And he was so desperate this is what he could grab onto. So, um, and that's, that was my thing was because when I met him and I was on their show, you know, that was one of the things that I said, God, Nick's one of the nicest guys, him and, you know, Zach and which Zach. episode were you on by the way? Um, the Yost uh, theater. Okay. In Santa Ana. Santa Ana. Okay. But, you know, I mean, when I met them and, you know, I was talking to Nick and I was like, God, he's so, he's so down to hurt. And then when I saw the path that he was going on, I was like, God, that's just, it's, it's just too bad. It is. Like, like I say. It is. It just depends. It's that fine line of, do you want to be an investigator and do this for the love of it? Or do you want to be famous? Yeah, exactly. Yep. I mean, do it for the and can get a paycheck. And I guess you know he does have kids and a wife, and he's got to pay for for dinner on the table somehow. So I guess that's what we've come to. So do you have any final thoughts on on Nick and Katrina and uh, Steve Huff and the Wonder Box? 
<laughs> no, not really. I mean, it's just kind of, you know, I'm glad that we we're able to finally connect and, and, you know, and like I said, I'm just really impressed by everything that you do. Oh, and, thank and, you. Uh, that's why it was, to me, it was kind of important to finally talk to you. Absolutely. And uh, I appreciate and, everything you said. I mean, it's, it's nice to connect with people that understand where you're coming from with not only the science side, but, you know, kind of trying to weed out the fraudulent stuff and also being in communication with somebody that understands this is important to both of us, you know? Exactly. And yeah. that's why, that's why I wanted to reach out to you once, once you said, Hey, you know what you were looking for. And I was like, I have to say something. And that's, <laughs> I have to say something. <laughs> and that's not like me. I mean, usually to me to be on camera, I mean, I'm really shy on camera. Really? You know, I, yeah, no, exactly. But like right now, I was just like so hyped up and not even worried about it. That's because we have that in common. It's that common bond of loving the other side. And when you've had those experiences, whether you're a skeptic or not, obviously there's a big difference between just straight up non-believer and a skeptic. A skeptics at least experience something. They're just skeptical of it. But when you have those experiences where you know you saw that apparition or you know you felt that energy or whatever it is, God, it feels good, doesn't it? It is just the most amazing thing in the world because it's like, you know that this isn't it, that there is something else after this. And it's like, I want to know what it is. No. <laughs> and that's what keeps us going. It and is. It pushes us and pushes us. And like you said, this is my adrenaline rush. I, it's way better than motocross, man. <laughs> the only way that we're going to die is if we go into some weird, decrepit building that we shouldn't probably be in to begin with. Right. And we fall through a floorboard. Don't do that. All right, stay in touch, Rob. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm so excited to get this up. I know, right? Okay, <laughs> we'll talk to you later. The footage of him discussing having conversations with Robin Williams. According to Johnny Cash's family, the Robin Williams family is actually accusing um, Steve Huff of using old stand-up comedic footage um, as vocals that are coming through the wonder box of him talking. So basically they're calling it fraudulent. They don't appreciate Steve Huff um, basically trying to get famous off of using the name of Robin Williams and um, Johnny Cash. And apparently it's happened also with Michael Jackson and several other celebrities that I don't, I don't even have the list. So I can't even tell you guys, but Apparently, a lot of these celebrity families have come out and said that it's not appropriate. You shouldn't do it. Um, we want it taken down out of the respect of our dead family member, and he won't do it. I guess he gets irate. He blocks people. He talks bad about them. I don't know. Communication shuts down. So that's really unfortunate. I am just going to say that no matter what happens with this industry, obviously, it's still growing. It's still evolving, especially the scientific side, which is what I love so much. The number one thing in this industry is you have got to respect the dead. Remember, when you're going in their house, you're communicating with them in their home, not the other way around, which is why provoking is rude and not appropriate unless there's bullying going on. Depends on the situation. Um, but like, you know, Zach and Ghost Adventures did go into Johnny Cash's home by the White Castle in Jamaica but they were invited there. <laughs> they were allowed to go in and attempt communication with Johnny Cash. So very big difference in actually getting um, approval and probably a contract signed versus um, just saying, oh, you know, infinitively, I, I communicated with Michael Jackson, Johnny Cash, and um, Robin Williams. To be honest with you, unless you were in that location and you have signed a filming contract document like I have taught you guys, what Steve Huff is doing is completely inappropriate and potentially could be illegal um, as far as some sort of a filming scam. When you're communicating with entities, which if you guys are ghost hunters, which most of you that follow me have done some sort of paranormal work, you can never definitively say 100% that this person is what they say they are. You know, like if 
my cousin Brandon comes through. I don't know 100% if that's actually Brandon. It could be a fraudulent, you know, spirit coming through pretending to be Brandon so that I trust it. You know, it could be something dark or you know, whatever. You have to think outside the box. For him to make these claims and allegations that he's actually talking to these celebrities, I think it is propaganda. I think it is um, really just tacky. I'm just gonna be honest. I just think it's tacky. I think it's disrespecting the dead and it doesn't matter if they're famous or not. It's disrespectful and I don't like it. Um, I have nothing against Steve Huff. I think that he's a great salesman. That's what I think it's come down to. And um, I would not spend $2,000 on this after I found out what it is made of. Not many people have these um, wonder boxes, Huff boxes, whatever you want to call it, because they are so expensive. Um, and um, I, I think I find them to be fraudulent, to be honest. Uh, there's been multiple claims where there's tape recorders inside that are playing at different times, backwards and forwards. Um, you know, they can connect with, like Rob said, using Los Angeles radio frequencies, unbelievable, um, because it's LA. <laughs> like, you wouldn't want to use that as something that is some sort of data collection when you're getting EVPs so... Unless it's an engineer like Bill Chapel, I won't be wasting my money. Whatever you guys decide to do is totally up to you. Um, I won't look down on you or frown on you b behind it. Um, just please respect the dead. Uh, please be wise when you're investigating. Please be wise when you're investing money in this field because money adds up in this industry. Um, and you don't want to waste money on something that you might you need to save for something that's better, you know? Like, so just take that in mind, okay? Give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you've subscribed to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you guys follow me on social media. Let me know what you guys want to talk about next in the comments below. What do you guys think about the Wonder Box? And I will catch you guys next time. Hell yeah.